All right, guys, well, here I have a CD4E. It's a 94 model. It's off of a uh, 94 Ford Pro, but you can find this uh, CD4E on uh, Mazda Tributes, uh, Ford Escapes, uh, Ford Contours, and Mercury Mystiques. Uh, we're going to do a basic teardown here and see what we're going to find. It had a uh, second uh, gear ratio error code and it also had a uh, uh, transmission range sensor code. The range sensor, uh, we're going to do a diagnosis later. For now, we're just going to look inside this unit and see where we're going to be able to find to uh, uh, locate that uh, second gear incorrect ratio. It also had a four, fourth gear incorrect ratio. That's, that's just going to be probably the band it's been worked before it's been rebuilt it's a 94 model you can see it has some paint on it all right well uh let's get started like uh like always let's go ahead and remove all of the external uh components this is our uh, vehicle speed sensor it's a two wire sensor let's get this out of the way this is the fiddler tube get that out of the way and uh i'm gonna Put those little bolts back on so we won't lose them. I know they're right there on the shop towel, but just so we won't lose them. And this is our pump drive shaft. It comes out by hand very easily. Make sure you don't lose it because if you lose it, then uh, if you install the transmission without that drive shaft, you're not going to spin the pump. The pump is back here. This is the pump. If the pump won't spin, it's not going to pump any fluid and the vehicle will not move. Okay, so we have a uh, kind of rounded bolt here. Let's see, where's my other socket? Okay, I got that bolt off already and uh, my 8 millimeter is, uh, it's broke, it's split. But I have uh, another one here and it took it right off. So it wasn't really the bolt that was stripped, it was my uh, my socket. And this is also a, a two-wire uh, uh, sensor or a pulse generator. They uh, generate their own uh, uh, sine wave. So we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, side cover or, or uh, also called the uh, valve body cover. The valve body lives under this uh, cover. gasket will break off, break loose. There we go. Here's our solenoid pack. If one of these solenoids uh, fails and if you have a, a solenoid code, you diagnose first the circuit. If you uh, diagnose that your circuit from the computer all the way down to your solenoid pack it's, uh, it's in good shape, then uh, you can go ahead and replace your solenoid pack. Go ahead and uh, remove it. bolts out, kind of squeeze the tabs in. This is an updated solenoid pack and you uh, identify that by the white connector. The brown connector solenoid pack you don't want to use. They have uh, torque converter clutch issues. One of the bolts is hanging up. There we have our complete valve body. Now, like I say, uh, this valve body has been done before, and it has a uh, transco correction kit, and you will identify it by this. This is a pressure relief valve, and the reason you want a transco shift kit on this one, uh, Sonex items are very expensive, 
And uh, Sonex, uh, I mean, a uh, Transco kit works very well in these valve bodies. And the, the original problem with this valve body is the pressure regulator valve will wear, and uh, you would have a torque converter clutch with line pressure crossed in, extremely high line pressure, and it would explode the, uh, the forward and direct drum. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get in here. I'm gonna unlatch this uh, mechanism here. There's, there's a rod that goes through here all the way to the uh, shif uh, shifter lever linkage. Undo that so I can take this uh, little uh, Z uh, uh, bracket here that holds my manual valve to the linkage here. So we won't lose that. Now let's go ahead and pop the bell housing bolts out and uh, get this bell housing out of the way. Get it in a better position here. All right, so it looks like we got most of the uh, bolts out. This is a fairly simple unit to work on. Once you uh, find your, your issues, your problems, it goes back in uh, very easily. We're gonna do a teardown right now and see what's going on. And uh, on this one, I promise you that as soon as uh, I can, you know, uh, get the parts in, we'll do an, an assembly video here. Our chain it, it looks a little uh, worn out we're gonna go ahead and replace this chain here's our differential and everything inside the barrel of the case is here and you have the uh, the chain that moves your differential uh, for it to uh, you know transfer the torque to your front wheels because it's a chrome wheel drive okay let's get this washer out of the way differential just comes out like that now it is very common for the bushings to get worn, as you see here, I mean I already got a bushing that just came off on its own. So uh, bushing kit, you cannot skip a bushing kit on this unit, it, you have to, and it's a must to put all the bushings in here. Here's our differential ring here. No ifs and buts about it, bushing kit, complete. Oh, and uh, it was leaking off of this axle, axle seal. Did you see here that it's kind of clean right here in this area? This was leaking, and one of the reasons could be that uh, bushing wear. It has another bushing right here, and this bushing is probably worn. That's what su uh, supports the axle. So if that bushing is worn, that means that your bushing is going to leak. So not only you replace the seal, but if your seal continues leaking after you replace it, then you have a problem with your bushing. Same thing with the rear wheel drive. If you replace the, uh, the seal on the extension housing and it continues to leak, then uh, you take your extension housing out, put a new bushing and another new seal, and you correct it at that issue. This is the rod that goes across here, and this is our parking mechanism here, and we have our uh, shift lever here, and this goes, you got the shifter cable that goes all the way to your shifter. All right, well, we got the differential out. This is just dirt from the bell housing. But you can see the magnet is kind of clean. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of fluffy stuff. I mean, I've seen this build up, I mean, maybe like a quarter of an inch. And that's just normal friction material. There's nothing to be alarmed by that. 
just inspect all your bushings, make sure like this right here, sometimes it gets worn out and you would see the wear, it would actually eat like a little step right here all the way down. So uh, this is nice and square, this is in good shape. Here's one planet. Bushings, just don't forget bushings. There's another bearing, get this bearing separated here. Here's our forward planet. Got two more uh, bearings. And just check your planets for a wobble on the pinions. Uh, if you have wobble, then you just go ahead and replace that planet. Here's our uh, input sprag and rotation, hold the sun gear, and the rays will turn uh, clockwise or, or if you go this way, it's going to turn counterclockwise, but I'll always hold it like this and turn it like that. Don't confuse yourself. Please don't confuse yourself. Hold it just one way and have a habit of just holding it a certain way because if you hold it like this and you're okay, it's turning counterclockwise, then you go, well, somebody distracts you, you hold it this way and you say, oh, wait a minute. I mean, it's turning the opposite direction. Just hold it one way and have a habit of holding it, you know, that certain way on all of your uh, sprag assemblies. Alright, we have our uh, turbine shaft. It also has a uh, bushing. All that has to be replaced. Now you can see a little discoloration here in the uh, reverse drum. Well, the reverse clutches are here and the second and fourth uh, band applies here. So we now can uh, see that we have a, uh, a band problem. Okay, let me, let me separate this assembly here. We have a little snapper right here. I'm going to go ahead and try to open it a little bit and separate the whole assembly. Once you get the snapper in, then you can separate the reverse drum from the, uh, the forward and direct. This is our reverse clutch hub and it splines into the uh, forward and direct drum and these four uh, 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 peaks that you see here are the exciter rings for your uh, the turbine speed sensor. This spins and it excites the sensor and that's what it reads off. Don't drop this, you break one of these and you put it back in, your transmission is never going to work. This is our reverse drum assembly and the two four shifts are applied on the outside. Let's look at our reverse frictions. There was no issues with reverse, there was no issues with forward, you only had an issue with second and fourth when it, when it warmed up. Cold, we had good second, but 20 minutes of driving, our frictions are good. They look nice and good. Even though they look nice and good like this, you want to replace them. I mean, I don't know how long this transmission has been on the road, but these are, is this dark or brown? That means age. So uh, if you have a that color, let me just go ahead and replace it. Now here we see a difference in color in the bushing. The white part looks like if it's new, and then you have the shiny gray part. That's the wear. So you got to replace these bushings, this Babbitt bushing. And always check the uh, ring groove area here. It's nice and smooth, so this drum is still good. Get that to the side with its clutches. Here we have our direct shell. And the same thing applies here. You can see a little bit of wear here, but it is passable. What I, what I mean here is that it's almost uh, still straight. But sometimes you will see it, you know, that it has a lot of wear. So this uh, uh, direct sun shield is, is still good. This little plastic washer that goes in here, I mean, I'm surprised that this one came out in one piece. Sometimes it's just stuck in there when you try to get it out. I mean, it just breaks in pieces. You have to, you know, you have to put a new one anyways. Our direct frictions don't, the pressure plate doesn't look too good. Let's look at our frictions. See the, the 
pressure plate on the outside looks a little bit heated up. You can see a little heat marks on it. You can see our direct frictions on the outside. It has a heat mark. And then the rest of them look in good shape. What's going on here is that uh, when it's hot, second gear is slipping, third gear engages, which is this. And uh, second is slipping, it's not holding. And when second gear goes in, it's going to give you like a slide bump. And it's holding all the inertia from all the uh, internal components spinning and it tries to hold to make third gear and fourth gear and third are applied at the same time so when fourth gear is slipping it puts us a lot it puts a lot of stress on this friction so that's what's going on here bushing has to be replaced you see two different colors on the bushing you have uh, two uh, ceiling rings here yellows are uh, aftermarket the original ones are white, so this transmission has been built before. You can tell about that. Here we have our forward and our coast, uh, coast clutches. The friction is in good shape. It's not damaged because it has the uh, Transgo kit. They're in perfect shape. That's what it looks like. And these are the coast frictions. They are also in great shape. All right, well, let's put this thing to the side, this friction. Let's get this drill out of the way here. This is our low reverse uh, sprag assembly. See how it turns one way and it locks in the opposite direction. Just pay attention. Uh, free clockwise and locks counterclockwise. Go ahead and get the snap ring off. The good thing about putting everything on video is that you can actually see the rotations of the spray. It has a little cover here that covers the sprag mechanism. It has a little roller with the spring and if you see it has like a little ramp and you turn it clockwise it goes inside the ramp. If you go counterclockwise it wants to go in, uh, uh, up the ramp and the roller gets on the on where the two uh, ends meet and it stops right there. I mean that's kind of the way the, the one-way roller clutches work. We have a uh, wavy plate and the wavy plate goes underneath the uh, sprag assembly and you notice how I got this out it has an ID groove right here on the inner race and it does, doesn't have an ID groove on the uh, inner race on the opposite end so the, the ID groove that you see here goes towards, towards you or towards the cover and you got your uh, wavy plate, low reverse and you got your frictions and your steel. So this clutch pack here uh, works in low and reverse. We have another uh, steel. Get this out of the way. We have the return spring and we have a piston here. This is our filter. The filter is internal, internal. It cannot be replaced unless you go this far and turn this transmission like it is you take the uh, one grommet out, take the filter out, put a new one in it but it's a lot of work just to do that alright well let's take our pump apart 8 millimeters Okay, now that our compressor uh, turned off, let's go ahead and continue here. I already took off the bolt. I'm going to get my hammer here. With the back of the hammer, I'm going to hit the pump from the inside. Don't hit where the uh, sitting rings go. Just hit on the sides. And it'll push right out. Okay, let's get the hammer out of the way. Here we have our 2-4 band. And as you see here, it's smoked. It's pitch black, carbonized. And this is just uh, with age. I mean, it could be that uh, the issue, the most thing that makes uh, a lot of sense here is the leak from the axle. 
ran it low on fluid, driving on the highway, started losing plenty of fluid that the pressure started dropping down, the band started slipping, uh, and that's where, I mean, it seems like it all started there. All right, well, let's get this out of the way. This bearing here goes here. This drum sits here. And as you see, you have uh, ceilings rings here for the forward, for the coast, for the forward, for the coast, for the, the, for the direct, and also for the reverse. It crosses from here to here, and then from these ceiling rings into the uh, reverse drum. So it's pretty ingenious how uh, they started compacting the units back in the 90s. And like I said, this is a 94. It's a Ford Pro. And this is a Torx 30. And actually, this is the first year that the CD4E came out. On 93, the Ford Pro had a uh, two-pan ECAT. Actually, this transmission is a very good transmission. I like the way it works. I like to work on them. They're very easy. They're very simple. Once you fix the main root of the problem, this is our uh, support here. You can see Transtec gaskets. That's what comes in, normally comes in a kit. This one has uh, an updated plate. Back in 94, you would have a plate that would have uh, two more holes here. And uh, it was believed that the spacer plate caused the, this drum to blow out. And then later research, uh, they found out that actually it was the valve body causing the issue. But this one already has a updated uh, space plate for the 94 year model. This is a, uh, the a little star that turns our inner pump gear. And here we see the pump drive. This one uh, goes in here. And as you see here, there's your two, the inner and the outer uh, pump gears. And that's what turns your pump. You leave this out, the transmission is not going to move, the car is not going to move. Okay, so let's take this uh, pump gears out, just check them for wear. They are in good shape, they're not scratched at all, you can still see a little bit of the black. You know, uh, normally new, they look like this. But with age, with time, uh, that black uh, uh, finish, it just wears out. It's like a handgun. You know, the more you grab it, the, the blue starts falling off. All right, so there we have it, CD4E disassembled. Uh, P0732, uh, P0734, incorrect gear ratio in second, incorrect gear ratio in fourth. It also had a uh, transmission range, range sensor circuit high. Uh, we're going to diagnose that later, and uh, we're going to go from there. I'm going to go ahead and order the parts that I'm going to need for this one, and then uh, we're going to do an assembly video on the CD4E. Uh, like always, uh, click like, subscribe, subscribe, and uh, whenever one of these vid uh, more videos come out, you know you will be notified if you're subscribed to my channel. All right. Well, my name is Hiram. Thank you for watching, and. Uh, Keep up the keep up on the uh, assembly video coming next.